Hello, everyone. Good morning, good evening, depending where you are. I'm Marty Murray. I'm Chief Curriculum Officer for Target Chess Prep. And with me today is Jay Lee, who recently scored an amazing 790 on the GMAT. Welcome, Jay. I'm so excited to have a chance to talk with you. Yeah, Thank no, you. thanks so much for having me here. It's great to be here, and hopefully I can offer some uh, you know, advice and uh, you know, guidance on how I got to that point. But really Excellent. Yeah, I think you will. You know, given some of the things you said as we've been talking to prepare for this, I think we have a lot we can learn from Jay. Uh, he has a few interesting things to tell, and so this is going to be a pretty informative uh, discussion, I'm pretty sure. Jay, maybe you could start by telling us a little bit about your background. Yeah, of course, happy to. Um, so I'm currently, uh, well, I actually recently um, just graduated from Stanford, but I did my bachelor's there in economics um, and also minor in Spanish and then just completed my uh, master's in science in management science and engineering. So mm -hmm. um, just finished that actually this past month and I'll be starting my work in finance, um, you know, come this fall. Oh, congrats. It all sounds pretty fun. You know, it's interesting. I was an Thank econ you. major as well. And uh, I found that a lot of the thinking for econ, like how to look at factors and what pushes one thing one way and what pushes something else another way, definitely fits with the GMAT mentality. So already I'm sort of discovering maybe some of what uh, played into your, uh, into your scoring so high in the test. How did your, uh, can you tell us a little bit about how your GMAT journey started? Yeah, no, of course. So I guess it really started um, back when, was it right during the fall? Um, you know, I knew I was going to be finishing slightly early, early, earlier than normal because most students graduate in the spring, but I was finishing up in the winter. And, um, you know, at the same time, I thought, you know, maybe, you know, three, four years down in the future, I might want to go to business school. I'm you know, still not completely sure I'm going to, but I thought, you know, if I'm going to do that, then um, I want to just have like all the pre prerequisites I need to apply done before I'm working. So I don't have to worry about those factors, you know, once I start. And yeah. so that's how I ended up deciding that um, you know, I would take the GMAT. Um, I did take it sorry, before, but um, by, by this point, I knew that like my scores would be expired because I'd taken it quite a while ago. And Wait, uh, you know what? You I'll dropped out a little bit. Yeah. So you were saying you took the GRE before? Yeah, yeah. So I took the GRE before and um, that was like two, three years ago. So I thought that by the time I actually decided to apply, my scores would not be um, usable because I think there's like a five year expiration period. So I thought, you know, why I should, I, I thought I should try again. But at the same time, I heard that the GMAT just more widely used and accepted. So I decided to give that a go. And that's how I ended up kind of going on. Interesting. Path. Interesting. So you'd already taken a jury. How did that go, by the way? Yeah, no, um, it, went, it went pretty well, actually. Um, I'd say my background in standardized testing has been pretty strong. Um, and so uh, when I took the GRE, I got a 170 in quant and 164 in verbal. So you know, pretty good scores I was really happy with. But, mm -hmm. you know, unfortunately, I knew that they're probably not going to be usable by the time I decide to end up, by the time I decide to apply to business school, if I end up doing so. So what I'm getting here is that this maybe isn't just a GMAT story, but this might be like a success and standardized test story. Like it sounds as if you kind of have a knack for getting these scores. And uh, so I'm pretty excited to hear about what you have to say here because we, I think we can all, this sounds like we're starting, I, maybe there's a formula you have that we can really learn from, you know? Uh, so, okay, so did you take a practice test or anything? How did your uh, GMAT prep start? Yeah, so I took a practice test um, even before I looked at anything. Like, I didn't even know what the format for GMAT was like before I took this practice test. All okay. I knew was there was some verbal, there was some quant, but that was about it. Right. And um, I took a practice test, um, got it, you know, got a six ninety. But I also found it, which I you know, which I would say is like a pretty strong score very early on. But mm -hmm. I would say I found it really difficult compared to other standardized exams I've, I've taken, so ACT. Uh, GRE. So I'd say it was probably one hardest standardized test I had done. And I, I was quite surprised by that, I have to say. What do you think? What made it hard for you? What was the challenge there? What, what you know, what did you run into? Mm. Yeah, I think it was a combination of just the, the type of questions that um, the GMAT uses. So for example, 
Um, um, you know, I think the logical reasoning was something I wasn't very used to. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the verbal question, like the sentence correction questions, for example, are pretty difficult in the sense that it's the grammar, the, the rigor, the grammar that you need to know is much harder than what you might need to know for, say, something like the ACT. And yeah. so I think is both the type of questions I was being asked and the level of depth that they were being that you were required to know that made it pretty hard compared to a lot of the other um, exams I'd done. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I get that. It's it's a whole new world. I remember the first time I took a practice GMAT. Man, the quant section is like, how do I get through this on time? The verbal section, what yeah. is going on? You know, so it's a whole new challenge. Uh, okay, so how did you? So what? What you know? What was your reaction to that? How did you start preparing? Yeah, I think so. Basically, you know, I took the test, um, got that score, and you know, at the same time, I looked through the questions that I got wrong, and you know, my score wasn't bad, but I looked at all the questions. I got a lot of questions wrong on both the verbal and the quant. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't remember the exact number, but I remember it was quite a quite a decent amount. Like I remember, like the verbal, for example, I got like maybe twelve or thirteen wrong, so maybe like. 30, 35 percent, 40 percent of the questions wrong. So, yeah, um, I think at first it was a little demoralizing, but then I realized <laughs> you know, first I don't know anything about this, so obviously I'm not going to do that great. If I did, then you know that that be you know that that would say something about me being a genius or just the exam being too easy. So I knew like there's yeah. I could I could I could you know turn this around. So I think the first thing I did was actually just look up what I actually need to do to prepare. Mm-hmm. And I'm someone that definitely does well when I have some sort of like standardized, not standardized, but like some like kind of structure to the way I approach something. Yeah. And so I did just a little bit of like Reddit searching, honestly. <laughs> like that's what exactly that's exactly how I found, you know, target test prep. And I just kept coming up in all the comments when it came to like what material was the best to prepare for this exam. And right. so um yeah, that's how I ended up kind of arriving at TTP. Um and I literally you know, just started using them from day one until, you know, the day I finished the exam, actually. So um, I, I don't think that it was anything more complicated than that, really. That's pretty interesting. I'll, I pick up one interesting thing, like your, your reaction, you know, to like, wow, this thing really beat me up. Mm-hmm. But there's definitely something I can do. And I think there's a big takeaway from that for anyone. You know, it's funny. I was talking to a pro soccer player once. And he said, uh, he said, you know, you can't, uh, you can't ever think the player you're trying to take the ball away from is better than you. You got to go mm-hmm. with the attitude that you're just going to get it done. And you know, I think that yeah. might be part of your formula here. Like, you know, you say, well, okay, it's no big deal. I, I figure, like, okay, this is, yeah, this is not what I'm used to. <laughs> I got more beat up by a test than I'm used to getting beat up. But like, okay, there has to be a way to, to achieve some, you know, to get better at this. I mean, it sort of figures. And that mentality right there, it's kind of like that soccer player mentality. You know, there's there's got to be a way to get this done. This is not about me not being up to this test. It's about figuring out how to make it happen. So mm-hmm. right there is, you know, part of your success formula, I think, that we can all learn from. And then, okay, so you, you saw your needs and you, you grabbed the target test prep course. You got started there. Uh, you know, how did that go for you? Uh, I think it went you know, really well, just not just based on the outcome, obviously, but um i think going back to the idea of like me being someone who wants structure in the way i do mm-hmm. things i think this is exactly the answer for me um i think everyone's studying um a- approach to studying for not just the gmap but other things you know varies some people yeah. are okay with a lot more kind of flexibility and pulling things from you know like different places in order to get what they need i'm definitely mm-hmm. someone that kind of likes that structure and i think you know TTP really worked well for me because it's really organized, you know, from, you know, from okay. the onset, you see exactly what you need to do every day. Uh, what's the order of the material and it kind of all connects to one another. Yeah. And then after every section, you get those um, quizzes and they're also organized by difficulty level. So it's organized for you from, you know, A to Z. And I think that's really, uh, that's something that's not, that's taken for granted, I think. Um, mm-hmm. part of the job of preparing for this exam is the studying, but also another part is actually um, organizing the way you need to study. And I think TTP Absolutely. does that part for you. So you can actually just focus on the studying part. And I think once you, once you can just do that, that yeah. makes it, you know, 10 times easier than having to do both. Yeah, that totally makes sense. And, and, and the thing about preparing for the GMAT is I find it's kind of like, once you get the algorithm down, it happens for you. Mm-hmm. 
so that like you said okay it gives you the it gives you the information first and then sends you through easy medium and hard practice i mean no matter what you're you know whatever resource or anything you're using for the gmat that is the algorithm you know mm -hmm. and I, I mean to me that's also a reason why you achieve this score is you just you follow that algorithm correctly okay i'm going to learn this these concepts and then i'm going to practice until i nail them i looked over your analytics it looked like you retook some tests you were relentless some of your uh, some of your accuracies were 100 percent you know that type of thing so you mm. you dove into the algorithm and you just went with it and so i guess that helped a lot yeah, no, exactly. And I think kind of going back to the idea of like the following the process and going with the steps. Um, I think it's also fine to, you know, if you think that you're really strong in one section, um, you know, to maybe spend less time on it and focus on another mm -hmm. section because, you know, with everyone, the amount of time that they have is different. Some people are working full time jobs. And I'm, I'm, I, was, I was a student back when I was studying for it. So I had much more time than, you know, I would mm -hmm. say most people do. And so yeah. if you're trying to prioritize and optimize, you know, output, I guess, results here to time Absolutely. invested, then yes, like you can think about what you're really strong and what you're not strong in, and kind of allocate time based on that. But I think yeah. people might have a misconception of what they're strong in, which is, I think, the biggest, the bigger issue. So for example, I thought, um, I'm trying to think of an example, but I can't think of it on the top of my head, but let's say I thought I was really strong in something like, uh, like part A, but okay. I take a quiz for that and my results actually end up being pretty poor, then that would say that I'm actually yeah. not that strong with it. And so I want to devote more right. time to that. I think that's where people might get things wrong is they like just assume they're really good in something because they think they've done it before. But you know, if you've done practice it within a couple months or years, it's easy to forget. So I think mm -hmm. that's just the important part is um, just knowing that. So I used to take like, you know, some medium and hard quizzes in some subjects. And if I did well, and I was also feeling confident I knew it pretty well, then I wouldn't devote as much time to that versus other areas right. where I knew I was a lot weaker. And I think that was also an important part of the process. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And really taking the quizzes is going to prove, you know, be proof of concept there. I know myself that I had some topics that I found easy and it turned out they totally tripped me up on the first time I took the test <laughs> because I didn't prepare for them. Okay, you know, I'm good at this. Exactly. And I ended up spending eight minutes on one question, seven on another. I ended up having three in a topic I wasn't good at, or I thought I was good at, but I wasn't. Yeah, so it's really, so there's a key thing. Absolutely, don't assume that you're good at something. And at the same time, mm -hmm. dive into your weaknesses. And, you know, people sometimes are uh, uncomfortable with certain topics and they shy away from them. I know one of them is combinations and permutations. A lot of people, I'll oh, do it. Maybe I shouldn't even work on that. Or uh, a coordinate mm -hmm. geometry. Maybe I shouldn't even work on that, you know. And the truth is, you dive into these weaknesses, you might find that they're actually kind of fun. Uh, me personally, combinations became one of my favorite topics. So diving mm -hmm. into your weak areas is really key. Yeah, that would, so there's another another thing that took you to your score, right? Nailing those weak yeah. areas and thoroughness exactly. too. Thoroughness is huge. So would you say, was your prep smooth? Were there any bumps you ran into? You know, is there any drama here? <laughs> um. I, I don't think there were any like major bumps, but I would say that kind of going back to what you mentioned about being discouraged or not being comfortable going into like the areas of weakness, that definitely was something for me. Um, for example, like number properties, I remember that being something that I struggled at the start. I don't remember exactly what scores I was getting, but I remember, for example, in like the hard ones, sometimes I got like 60s or something like that, 60% mm -hmm. um, accuracy. And, you know, looking, try, as someone trying to like hit that 90, 100%, that's obviously not a score I was very comfortable with. Um, and so mm -hmm. I think just having to like push myself to, you know, keep going through that and keep reviewing what I got wrong, um, even if I wasn't comfortable with those questions was something that I felt was really important. Um, yeah. And also I think it's important to like, not just do the hard tests, but also easy medium ones. I think that's what I also learned is that if you just, try to do the hard test every time because you think or you you kind of underestimate the importance of the easy medium ones it can bog you down because the hard tests take yeah. long like they take you know 30 minutes 35 mm -hmm. minutes and so sometimes you just don't want to sit down and do those and so i yeah. think if you just focus on doing the hard tests you end up not actually doing as many questions 
as right. if you're willing to do some hard tests every once in a while, but also do med- easy and medium ones to, you know, at least keep doing pr- problems, even if they're not always the hardest questions. Interesting. Yeah. So you're still building your skill on the topic. Then when you get back to the hard tests, you're more ready to rock. You get it. I mean, the medium, the easy tests at medium are, are important for a few reasons. One, it does build that foundation. You get the concept mm-hmm. straight. I mean, you dive into the hard test. You don't even know why you're missing the question. You know, exactly. at that point, you're not really ready to apply this stuff. The other thing is, you know, getting medium questions correct is the foundation of a hard score. Mm-hmm. I mean, most of the questions you're going to see are going to be medium. Even if you're scoring, you know, in the in the 50s, most of the mm-hmm. questions you're going to see are going to be medium and medium hard questions. Yeah. So you really, exactly. you really need, you, you need to get, you need to get those down anyway. So it's a really key thing to, mm-hmm. uh, to do. And at the same time, I can totally see so many people say, you know, I started getting demoralized. I was doing the hard questions to the hard on TTP. A lot of time, the hard verbal questions, someone says, what is going on? <laughs> These are so hard. They're tripping me up. I don't get it. Don't get demoralized. It's just a skill building phase. You know, you don't have the skills. Mm-hmm. Take your time, right? Learn the stuff. This is, that's when you're learning yeah. is when it's killing you. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, I think, yeah, for example, I'm trying to think the, um, uh, logical reasoning questions. I remember like, they, they're not like 10, they're like five, six questions. I think if I remember correctly from the quizzes usually, mm-hmm. and on the hard ones, sometimes I would get like, you know, two out of six or one out of six or something, something yeah. like that. And I think in this situation, it's very easy, um, to just be like, all right, I don't want to look at this. I'll do it later and just push it back. But I think yeah. it's just important to kind of go back and in that moment, right after you get your results, stay, stay in the computer and just look at, you know, what did you do wrong and write that down. I think it's important to keep track of everything you got wrong and also things that oh, you might want to write that you just guessed on because that's how I at least remember yeah. most um, the information that's like most valuable to me because obviously information that I'm good at, that's great, but it's like the information or stuff I'm bad at that I need to like really recall because that's probably the stuff that's going to trip me up when it comes to the actual exam. And so keeping track of that, wherever I have an iPad, so I just like write it all down like notability, for example, and keeping track of all that is so important um, just because that's what's really going to stick with you when it comes to the exam and going to be the thing that's going to make the decision. That's going to, that's going to make or break your score potentially. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. That's really interesting. So it's how you respond to your errors. It's huge mm-hmm. theme. Right. Exactly. Are, are you going to turn off? You turn off the laptop. I'm out of here. <laughs> or is it that the time when you dig in and go, OK, let me see what happened here. I mean, I honestly found that kind of fun. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. I would do an RC question, go through the passage, you know, answer the question, feel confident. Look at my answer. Go, oh, man, there's no way I missed this. And then I actually find it kind of, found it kind of fun to go, well, you know, how did this thing get me? Mm-hmm. It's painful. But it's kind of cool at the same time. And that's, you know, that's, and you're trying to, you're, you want to beat this game. You want to win this game. So you got to figure out, well, what, what do I need to do to get it right? You know, so that's, exactly that's huge. So how did you stay motivated throughout this? Did you, you know, did, did it motivate, did it self-motivate? Like what kept you going? Yeah, I think it's important to know basically what you need to do each day. And what I mean by that is if you don't prepare in advance, uh, let's say the day before, a couple of days ahead of time, what exactly you want to complete in terms of goals or uh, milestones for that day. Mm -hmm. Then once you get to that point where you like maybe set aside an hour to do some, you know, GMAT preparation, it's very hard to be motivated to do work because you don't have a specific direction that you're going in so for me at least i kind of built a habit every week of on my google calendars putting like two hours i put my notes like i'll do you know this section from the quant set the quant side or uh, or like you know geometry from the quant side or i'll do um subject verb uh, practice from the verbal side and just having that level of like depth or i guess detail in terms of what i want to cover each day in advance of me working on that day really helped give me some motivation to cover those milestones because I actually knew exactly what I needed to do that day. And I think that was important for motivating me because once I knew exactly what I need to do, you know, it's much easier to do it versus having to think about what I need to do before I can even start. And I think that was a huge motivating factor for me. And then on top of that, I think also just, you know, 
setting a date that I'm actually going to take the test. Um, so, you know, I think it's important, like, that please don't, like, you know, book a GMAT date um, before you even start prepping because that's, you know, I, I don't want people to just, like, book a GMAT date, like, two months ahead and think I'm going to, like, get it, get to that point and be ready before they even start preparing. But, you yeah. know, once you, like, started preparing and are, like, you know, a couple of weeks in and have a general idea of where you're at, um, just, you know, booking a date and setting a goal, um, I think it's pretty flexible nowadays I, in terms of changing a date anyways, but just yeah. having that date on your calendar really motivates you because, you mm -hmm. know, it sets like a limitation or basically a point by which you have to be ready, a deadline. And yeah. so I think that just makes a big difference versus, you know, not having a specific date and being, oh, I'll be ready by, you know, I can, I can be re ready by whatever date because I can book this whenever. And so I think that's just important to have. Yeah, that's interesting. I don't think it works for everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, but I do. Yeah, it is key to have some kind of target end date. I mean, booking a exactly. test doesn't necessarily work for everybody, but having mm -hmm. some kind of target end date can definitely help. I mean, and even if you go past that end date, fine. At least you were shooting for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, at least you were shooting for had something to shoot for. I'm going to get this done by May. I'm going to get this done by September, whatever it is. Having something you're shooting for to keep you going and, you know, keep you going every day. Because it's so important also to just keep going every day so this thing doesn't drag out forever. Because then you have to, yeah. I mean, sure, you know, I would say that people will say, well, you shouldn't prepare for the GMAT. I've seen some people say, oh, for more than six months, because then you start forgetting things. And then, of course, I've seen people prepare for two years and score super high. So mm -hmm. clearly that's not really true. But it's definitely a little truth in the idea that, OK, get this thing done. You know, you, you want to you don't want your social life to be on hold forever. You don't want to be forgetting the stuff you learned in the beginning and have to review it, at, you know, too much. So, yeah, it's great to uh, to set up that's that set up a day to motivate yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, are there any sections? So you, you mentioned number properties. Anything else you found particularly challenging? Yeah. Uh, geometry. Uh, that's for I think you touched on that. Um, for me, at least, I have not done geometry since you know eighth and ninth grade. So that was something that I was super rusty with, even though I assumed I was good at it. Mm -hmm. um when i originally started uh so i think it kind of goes back to the idea like know what you're not good at um as much as you should know what you're what you are good at um and for me i knew geometry i learned that wasn't my strong suit so that was yeah. definitely one area um when it came to verbal section um so i don't you know i don't have ttp anymore but um i'd say i struggled a lot with um i think not not the subject verb. I'm trying to remember. I there were there were a couple of chapters I struggled with. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely in the verbal, and it just took a lot of practice in terms of, you know, just doing a lot of practice questions over and over again. So I actually opened the same tests and did them. I reset them and did them like three, four times sometimes, just oh, to really? see, like, yeah, just to see if I would see my score improve. But I didn't do like you know the day after or anything like that. I like took some time between, so mm -hmm. it wouldn't be like something I'm just remembering from my memory rather than me actually knowing. Yeah, um, and I think that was really important. So, so redoing think, the same yeah. verbal questions was helpful. I mean, and that's a that's yeah, an exactly. interesting thing for people to understand. There's a lot of time people talk about running out of verbal questions. Uh, but so, you know, so you found that just redoing, going through, making sure you totally understood really helped there. Yeah, exactly. Um, just, you know, doing the same questions, but, you know, with some space between them you yeah. know, to make sure it's not just coming from memory. I think it was really important. Mm -hmm. So what so what other aspects of the course did you find helpful? I mean, you said, OK, it guided you. Uh, what, you know, the error, any features like the error tracker? Did you use that? Uh, Anything else in the course that you really that you found really uh, push your prep along? Yeah, I think for me the um, I didn't use the error tracker as much, but the custom test was helpful. I used it a couple times. Mm. Um, I think I used it a couple times for math questions as well as verbal questions. That was really helpful. Um, another part that I found helpful was um, I don't know if it's like a I, I guess this is a feature, but just like the entire like you the UI for me was something that made it very easy to follow um, mm. on the quizzes part. Like it tells you exactly the areas where you were sufficient or insufficient in terms of passing the, um, you know, bar that the, you know, it automatically sets. And oh, yeah. like, view like, you know, where you lacked uh, where, or where you might've been more weak in and where you were really strong in. 
And so I think the UI itself is just fundamentally really good in terms of helping understand what your weaknesses are and what your strengths are. I think that's right. such an important part of preparation for this exam. That's really interesting. So it, all, it sort of also sort of gamifies it and tell, just looking at this dashboard and saying, where do I have to push this up? And if you just exactly, keep yeah. whack a mole those low points, yeah. <laughs> You eventually are going to drive everything up. And you even talked about, so you, you said, oh, I wasn't getting the normal, like, 100% accuracy. So you mm -hmm. were shooting for super high accuracy. And I think that's something that, like, a lot of people can learn value from. You know, it's easy to think, well, I'm getting most of the questions correct. Oh, I'm getting most of the questions correct. I'm getting most of the critical reasoning questions correct. I'm getting most of the combinations questions correct, or whatever it is. But on the mm -hmm. GMAT, it's particularly in verbal, to get a high score, you have to get a high percentage of the questions correct. Yeah. You know, so, and I think a lot of people get surprised by that because they feel pretty good, you know, like a passing grade when, you know, when you're in high school, 60% is passing, 70% is pretty good, even 80% is pretty strong at that point, you know, and if there's a curve, oh, wow, you're looking great, but you're getting 80% in verbal, nah, are you, are you, you know, then when you take the test, if it's 80% easy, medium, and hard, we're only going to see medium and hard questions. So now you're getting, mm -hmm. you know, 70, 60% of the medium and hard. You're like, well, I felt pretty good, but you didn't get that score you wanted. So I think that you're, you know, there's another thing that, that uh, was really key for you is shooting for high accuracy across the board, just being relentless. Don't you think so? Yeah, no, I agree. And I think that that's a really important pro uh, part of the process is making sure that, you know, even if it's one or two questions that you might have gone wrong on a practice quiz, uh, making sure you don't make that mistake again. Um, I think that's just a really important part of this process. Because if you're going for a high score, like one, two questions could make the difference between, uh, could make the difference of like 20 points, 30 points in your score. And so yeah. it's just so important to be as accurate as you can um, to, you know, the highest degree possible. I, I totally agree. You know, sometimes... I ask people, well, okay, you got 80% right. Why did you miss the other two? You know, like, what is it about those two questions? And that's what you need to figure out. Like, well, why didn't I get 100% mm -hmm. right? I mean, let's say it's a math topic. Well, if you know the topic, it sort of figures that you would, you know, get close to 100% of the questions correct. Mm -hmm. So if you're not, then you got to ask yourself, well, what is it about my process? What am I doing? You know, what is my mentality? Is it my, am, am I looking at details? What, are, what are my habits that aren't mm -hmm. working here? You know, so, because obviously, I mean, some of the questions are harder than others, but let's say you're doing a set of medium questions. You're doing 15 medium questions and you miss three. Well, they're all medium questions, right? Yeah. So it sort of figures that you, if you really, if you're, if, and so much of this comes down to habits. And I think that's another theme here as far as scoring high is habits, you know? So you, whether you're, people are paying attention to details or, uh, or just how your mentality is. If you miss something, do you go back and look at it? These are those, you know, atomic habits that really matter that all sort of add up. So I think that's probably another theme we're seeing here as far as how do I get that high score? I mean, and it, you know, what well, depends what a high score is for you. You know, maybe you're high, maybe you're like a high score is 610. Look, I just want to get from 550 to 610. Well, what are your habits? What do you have? If you change a few little habits, it can change so much. You know, and we're hearing things adding up, being knowing what you're going to do when you're preparing, going into it, shooting for high accuracy, diving into your weak areas. All these things add up and drive your score up. So then you say, well, gosh, you scored an amazing 790. Well, it, you know, if we did the detective work and watch this guy, we say, well, there's a reason why it happened, you know, and this can happen for anybody. That's, exactly. that's a big part of the theme here, too, that this, you, you, whatever score you want, you can achieve it. People talk about score ceilings or, you know, I'll never get this level. Look, you know, there's no one was born scoring 790 on the GMAT. Everybody has to prepare. Okay, so if I you agree. just look at what people who do it, how they prepared and you know i see these themes the high accuracy you know whatever it is the mentality of uh what happens how do you respond when things go wrong you know stuff like that these all add up and that's what drives your score up like, once again like a machine it's like an algorithm mm -hmm. you know yeah no, i agreed um i think the nice thing about a uh, standardized exam if you can say it's nice is that there is a limitation to the you know, the combination of questions that they can ask you, um, you know, there's a certain amount of material that they cover. And 
you know, as you know, knowing that, you know, that, you know, you have control of um, the exam in the sense that you can literally know everything that's going to be meant asked you um, or most of it, because there is a certain limitation to what they can ask you. And so I think that should be something that people keep in mind is that, you know, as long as you put the right. time in, as long as you, you know, put that dedication into studying for this, um, you know, that perfect score or near perfect score is, is, is doable because it's all within your control because, you know, there's only a right. certain number of questions or way that questions can be asked on the exam. Yeah, it's a finite set of topics. So, okay, mm, exactly. if you just learn one topic after another, you're getting closer and closer to knowing all the topics. And at a certain point, you're mm -hmm. just going to rock this thing. Yeah, that's no, exactly. pretty interesting. And I think that's so important. Um, yeah. I think, I think, that, I think in it, one thing I'd add is like knowing that you got a question right because you actually knew the topic versus just kind of making an educated guess. Um, I think sometimes it's easy to like assume that an educated guess you made was made because you actually knew the content versus you just being a little lucky. And if you think that way, it's easy to gloss over certain topics that you might be, you know, you might not be as uh, familiar with as you think you are. Yeah. And so just making sure you're able to distinguish that when you're practicing um, so that you are, um, you know, so you, so that you don't like see that question in the future. And then this time make the wrong guess. I think that's a really important part of the process as well as knowing that, um, that educated guess is something you might want to touch more on versus just glossing over because you think you know it. Yeah, like you can't, that's so true. No, it's that self-awareness of knowing, did you really know what you were doing? Did you, mm -hmm. get, do you feel, do you really get it? And that's self-awareness. Exactly. So, and that self-awareness goes through this thing the whole way. I see in a verbal too, you know, it's that self-awareness of, well, I got, even when you get it wrong, well, what happened? Did you have mm -hmm. the self-awareness before you picked the choice of whether you were really confident? I mean, you know, and, that, and I think that adds up when you're taking the test too. You have that self-awareness. Mm. Well, have I done this right yet? Mm. You yeah. know, have I really have I uh, have I answered this? Am I have I answered this question thoroughly? Should I be choosing this choice? You know, I found that was huge for me. Um, in that, uh, in that, uh, in, especially in verbal, like I found that I had to learn to be aware as I'm taking the test of whether I was really confident in my choice, and then that's mm. when I got my hit my score ball. And didn't, instead of just leaving a question going, well, I spent enough time in there. Mm -hmm. So whether you're taking the test or practicing, it's not just about spending a certain amount of time on the que question. It's about getting to the point where you're confident that you understand what's going on and you've nailed it. So that's a big theme yeah. as well. Yeah. So, okay. Going to how did test day go? Did you, you know, did you do anything special on test day? Is there anything we can learn from here? Um, on test day, I think it went pretty smoothly. I did remotely. Um, and so I think, and I, I know some, it depends on a person. I personally just preferred working in my room, you know, place I'm most comfortable with. Um, I think the most kind of weeding at the test day was most important, making sure I actually had all of the, you know, details right in terms of what I could have, what I couldn't have, making sure I had all the, you know, documentations and, you know, things I needed in order to make sure I was eligible to actually take the test. Just make sure that you actually do that um, several days in advance of the test day, so you're not, you know, worrying about it the day before. Yeah. Um, and then also, what was helpful for me was, you know, I booked it at a certain time uh, on Friday, nine a.m. in the morning. And so, in the weeks leading up to that, I would literally practice. I would literally do like the GMAT practice exams, you know, that you can find online um, on Fridays at nine a.m. And I think that was helpful because it just helped me build a rhythm rhythm of being ready at that time on that day every week and so when i went into the actual exam it was kind of like just doing another practice exam and didn't feel totally out of my comfort zone that's pretty interesting that's huge uh i sort of had a similar experience where i was practicing in a certain way and and then and the, the test ended up feeling like a practice test and i was so there's another step right like once mm -hmm. again if you cover the bases well what else can i do here what else can i think of well, let me see if I take the test right when I'm going to be, when I take my practice test and it all lines up, it's really going to help. And this is a huge lesson for a lot of people. I mean, I see a lot of people who are taking their practice test after every afternoon at two. Mm -hmm. And then they sign up for the real thing at 8 a.m. on Saturday. And they get totally rocked. So, yeah, you know, keep your test day routine as normal as possible. Get used to that routine. Huge mm -hmm. move. 
huge yeah. move. Line yourself, align everything. Did you warm up before the test? You know, do those warm up questions? Yeah, no, I think what was helpful for me was like the, those, you know, the easy questions, the easy medium questions. Um, mm. Just like, you know, doing, I didn't, I didn't like, you know, overwhelm myself the day before, but, um, you know, I was just doing a couple of like questions from different sections I was like less comfortable yeah. with and just get my mind warmed up. Um, at that point, I don't think there's much more that you can do in terms of adding knowledge that's going to make or break your score. So it's just mm -hmm. about keeping your mind ready. Um, yeah. And for me, it was it was a morning. It was, it was in the morning, so I didn't do too much prep right before um, I started. I just tried to have a good breakfast, um, you know, set up everything and make sure that, you know, I had everything on, everything, everything I needed so that, you know, something like that or like me not having something like documentation or something didn't end up canceling my score so yeah, that's no, all that. i did on the day of yeah so did you do any practice questions day of or are you at all um not not really a day of yeah okay but the day before you definitely stayed in the game and i totally recommend yeah, that exactly. as well uh you know it, it's so many people think well i'll just take the whole day off before but think about this would a would a soccer team take the day off before totally or would they at least run through a few plays you know stay mm -hmm. in the, keep their heads in the game would uh, would a band before a big concert like take the day off before and like forget you know anybody knows if you really want to be on your game on game day it's it's helpful to be on the in, in your game the day before the game so yeah you don't want to over uh, over prepare or do a lot of preparation the day before your test or take two practice tests the day before your test but it definitely <laughs> helps you stay in this, right uh, it definitely helps you on test day to have been in the game the day before, I think. You know, you don't want to just mm -hmm. jump out. Oh, wait, where was this? <laughs> what was this yeah, team at thing? Exactly. Haven't done this in a couple of days. Okay, cool. So yeah. then you took the test. Was it, was it, did you feel good all the way through the test? Did you, you know, how'd that go? Um, no, actually, I would say I actually did not feel that great. Um, so the order I took it in was uh, verbal first, quad, mm -hmm. and then, you know, the IR and SA. Um, and I think going straight into the verbal, I definitely felt iffy about a lot of questions. Um, mm -hmm. Some of them, it was because, you know, I like remember the, all, I remember the rules, let's say the sentence correction. But for some reason, I had some doubt about, you know, whether it was the choice that I chose or maybe one other, one other potential option. And yeah. I think, you know, it nagged at me at some points, but I just realized, you know, I, after I answered, you know, it's nothing. I, I can't go back. Like, I think it's yeah. like me. It's the end of the GMAT. So you can't go back. So you just got to keep going. Right. And so it's really key. let's not dwell too much on that question um, and just, you know, try to do the best on whatever is in whatever is in front of us. And so I think that for that for me is like a really important kind of skill. If it's a skill that I start to like build, that's why I was taking just the practice exams as well is not letting the questions that are, you know, iffy uh, bog you down in the questions ahead because, you know, each question, well, I guess each question not worth the same, but you don't want to let previous questions affect your ability to do future questions. And so yeah. I think that was something that was really important. But yeah, I'd say uh, I didn't feel completely confident after the verbal uh, quant was slightly better, but also a couple iffy questions. And I definitely have, definitely have to say um, the score that I ended up getting in the end was a little higher than I expected. Um, I was like scoring pretty high in the practice one. So it wasn't completely out of like the realm of possibility, but yeah. I just was not super confident after I did the verbal and quant. And so I guess that's just to say that, you know, even if you took the exam and you don't feel as if it went that great, sometimes, you know, you know, might end up actually have gone actually haven't gone really well. So um, don't let that bother you too much when you're. Yeah, absolutely. Down. And and so many people do that first verbal section and don't feel good about it. And then kind of let quant mm. slide because man, that verbal felt exactly. so terrible. There's no way I'm doing well. So you really, you, you followed through anyway, like you said, you didn't dwell on the verbal when you got to quant, you didn't dwell mm. on the later verbal from the earlier verbal. And that way you nail it the whole way through, let the score take care of itself. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and I think just kind of adding to that, everyone has a different way to approach it. But for me, the way I approached the, the way I approached the order was taking the section that I was less confident about first. Mm -hmm. The reason I do that is because, you know, when I'm starting exam, my mind is like the most fresh and yeah. just 
the least tired because after you know an hour exam taking your mind's already more tired than it was now before and yeah. so in that state doing the section that i'm least comfortable with felt for me more strategically um, optimal than doing the section i was already very comfortable with and then you know after an hour being more tired approaching the section that i was already less comfortable with because i thought that would already yeah. kind of that already em emphasized my disadvantage even more so uh, i think that was also something that I start to do more um, as I was doing a practice test and then obviously on the uh, actual exam. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, that section order can make a big difference. So mm, what else, yeah. is there anything uh, like, you know, personal, like anything else you think we haven't covered? Like what else do you think we'd, uh, everybody should know? Um, I think, oh, just like kind of random thing, but um, the extra like practice exams that are not free are worth it in my opinion. Um, if you have the time, just like maximize the preparation you can do. Um, yes, you know, it costs money, but um, you know, I'd rather do, I'd rather complete the actual exam in one or two goes than um, have to do it multiple times and actually invest that money in taking more practice exams than, you know, try to avoid not paying for that and then, you know, end up taking, you know, three or the actual GMAT like three or four times. So I think. The Good practice point. exams are really worth it. And, you know, if you can, um, and obviously everyone has different situations, but if you can, then definitely go, do, definitely do it because I think it just, just makes you stronger, um, you know, in the end. And yeah. um, I guess anything else I'm trying to think about. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I touched on this, but if you do it remotely, um, just make sure like you have everything ready to go. I think there's a lot of rules that they have. Um, I ended up like spending an hour or two just going through all the rules that they had for taking it remotely just so I didn't yeah. like end up, you know, accidentally, you know, you know tripping on something and then and it getting like score canceled. So, so make sure that if you're doing it remotely, you know exactly what you need to do, what you can't do. Um, but I'd say those are kind of the two things, like, two additional things that I, that I, would, I would add. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, being so super set up because you hear of so many, uh, we could call them tragedies of people getting their scores canceled. Mm. Like you said, they just trip over something, they drop something, they push a button, and like, oh man, they were killing the test, and now the whole thing gets canceled on the spot. And uh, you have a big yeah. Uh, exactly. So we got a couple questions. One is, what advice would you like to give to maintain cons consistency throughout your preparation? I think you sort of touched on that, but is there anything else? Um. I think, I think what I said is basically what I would um, use to answer that question. Um, but yeah, just kind of recapping, making sure that for consistency, um, you're trying to do, or I guess I haven't I actually, I actually haven't mentioned this, but make sure you rotate sections that you practice um, every day or every other day. So not just doing, you know, verbal, you know, for entire like seven days and then doing quantum or seven days, but, you know, rotating every one, two days. Because mm -hmm. after even a week, you know, your knowledge or memory of the lessons you learned in the verbal section might already start to kind of go away. And so you just want to keep things fresh by constantly rotating what sections are practicing. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like I mentioned before, just keeping like a calendar where you can track and write down what you're going to cover each day so that by the time you get to that day, then you know exactly what you need to do. And all you have to do is do it now. Interesting. Excellent. And uh, and use the custom test all the way through or toward the end. Someone's asking when is it when is it best to use a custom test? I mean, I think it varies uh, for, for everyone. For me, it was but... near the end. Yeah, yeah, I think it varies for everyone. But for me, it just near the end because the custom test for me was, um, you know, I was making a test based on areas I was weaker in, and that's that's something you'll find out after you actually do a lot of the quizzes. So I think for me, that's why it came at the end. Wow! Wow! That's interesting. So like you, you don't, you made custom tests are your weak areas. Perfect. You know, let's dive right yeah, in there exactly. nail this stuff. And once you're going to finish off, you're going to, you're going to put the final touches on your skills, show up for test day and be ready to nail anything you see. Uh, I see mm. one more question coming in. Yeah. Okay. No, it's, it's, it's specific question. Someone's asking about the score guarantee. 
Yes, we do. Uh, we do offer 100 percent, 110, 100 percent, 110 point score improvement. You know, and we have a five day trial. You can come see the whole course. You can see everything that Jay's been talking about, from the custom test, the error tracker, to the to the way the lessons are set up with the chapter test. So, you know, be our guest and sign up for the course for five days, and see what's on there because uh, I think you'll like it a lot. It's super comprehensive and complete. Uh, and we have an accelerated uh, study plan that people can use who are already strong in quant. So that you're not, you can, there's definitely different ways to use the course and it has tracks for different scores and everything else. So I guess we've pretty much covered it. Yeah. You know? Um, um, yeah. It's not doing, yeah. <laughs> there's the formula, right? Okay, take that, take that opening test, you know, figure out where your weak areas are, find a structured way that works for you. Do the if do the algorithm of uh, of you know learning the material and then practicing. Rotate your practice so you keep learning, you keep refreshing. Shoot for high accuracy, and set and, and for test day really set yourself up so that look everything's normal. You've been taking your practice test when your real test is coming. You jump into this thing. You're ready to rock. You have a good mentality. You don't let the, you don't focus on dwell on questions you messed up, and you're ready to. And you let the score take care of itself, you know? Exactly. Yeah. I think that's, I think the last point is really important. Um, just to emphasize. If process, process, process every step of the way, confidence. And once again, don't let, don't get your get in your head that the other players better than you. There is a way to make it happen and, and get your score and, you know, win the game. Okay. I really appreciate it, Jay. It was really fun. Yeah, of course. Good to meet you finally. Uh, I'm glad you could come out. And uh, I guess everyone have a great rest of your day uh, and check out the course. Like I said, there's the, the five day trial for a dollar. If you haven't seen it already, you can see everything we were talking about. I really appreciate your coming out. It's been fun. Yeah. Thanks so much.